Hello, I'm Steve Peters with the Greendale Historical Society here in Greendale, Wisconsin. I'm here today with our 1938 Diamond T fire engine. This was Greendale's first new fire engine as we acquired it on September 1st, 1938. Prior to that, we had a 1921 Model T that was converted into a fire engine. I've never seen any photos of it. Uh, I only read one very brief description of it in an article about this engine when it arrived in September, and it just said it was a converted uh, truck into a fire truck. Now, when Greendale opened on May 1st, 1938, we would use that uh, Model T until this arrived in September. Now, you may be wondering, what do I mean by opening in May of 1938? Well, let me explain a little history about Greendale first before I go into more details about the Diamond T. The story of Greendale, Wisconsin goes back to the mid-1930s during the depths of the Great Depression. The entire country was experiencing hard times and men needed work, so the federal government, with the insistence of President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, initiated the Greenbelt Towns program under the direction of the Works Progress Administration, or also known as the WPA. There were originally going to be 100 of these towns, then it was reduced to 25, and then 5, but with limited funding and opposition from some neighboring communities, only 3 were built. Green Hills, Ohio, Greenbelt, Maryland, and Greendale, Wisconsin. The premise was to provide work for unemployed men, to provide new, clean housing for local residents, and to present a model community to the rest of the nation. Each location would be within 10 to 15 miles of an existing major city, making it possible for residents to work there, but far enough away to provide space to construct all of the public buildings, homes, and parkland for the newly created towns. The surrounding area would remain farmland, giving the community a green belt around the town to help provide fresh produce and milk for the residents, as well as a buffer from the surrounding areas and communities. Beginning in the summer of 1936, the construction of the homes was started, and the homes were then completed by the next summer in 1937. After that, then the public buildings were built, and they were completed in time for the village to open on May 1st, 1938. So you may be wondering, why do we call it the 1938 Diamond T? Well, it's a 1938 truck. Also, it was built by the Diamond T Truck Company out of Chicago, Illinois. They built uh, large trucks as well as pickup trucks, but what would have happened is it started out as a Diamond T chassis, meaning the frame, the engine, transmission, the hood, the fenders, the headlights, the wheels, tires, would have been provided to another company in Anderson, Indiana called Howe, H-O-W-E. You can see that written on the windshield there. Now what Howe did then is they took that chassis and they made it into a fire engine. They put on the windshield, the front seat, the, the water tank, uh, the, all the back end and all the equipment to make it into a fire engine and then it would have been delivered to Greendale after that. Now the Diamond T has a 320 cubic inch flathead six engine that develops 95 horsepower. Quite a bit actually in 1938 uh, for a truck uh, this size. And um, top speed at the time when it was brand new was 43 miles per hour. Now I drive the truck and I've gotten it up to about 40, 41 miles an hour and it just starts shaking quite a bit that you can't really go any faster than that. So it, it's pretty, uh, pretty much the same as it was when it was brand new in that respect. Obviously uh, no power steering, no power brakes, it's a four speed transmission, a manual and that sort of thing. There's a hand throttle and that sort of stuff. Uh, so it's, it takes a bit of learning to, to, to drive the truck. Uh, but it's still a lot of fun, and I very much enjoy driving it to events, events in Greendale. And we go to one event outside of Greendale, uh, a fire muster in Oak Creek, uh, once a year, and uh, drive it in parades as well. So it's, it's kind of a, a unique uh, vehicle, and uh, I'm one of only two that drive it, and I'm the only one restoring it. So it's, it's kind of a fun project for me to look every day to get the equipment that we need to put on the, uh, the engine to make it as close to as possible to the original condition. As I mentioned earlier, we acquired the engine on September 1st, 1938. We then used the engine in the fire department until 1970. 
Keep in mind in later years, it was just like an auxiliary truck or an engine uh, on standby if, if needed. Uh, they didn't use it as a regular engine because they had all modern equipment at that time as well. So then uh, we sold the engine. And then from 1970 to about 1985, I don't know where it was. Um, we don't have any records of that, and I'm, I'm still looking, but I'll, I'll try and figure out what happened to it. But then in 1985, it was found in a junkyard on the south side of Milwaukee. A gentleman that worked uh, at a body shop nearby saw it there, he purchased it, and he wanted to customize it. I believe like cut off the back end, uh, the tank, and remove some things and whatnot. He decided not to do that because it had a lot of clutch issues. And I can talk about that a little bit later as well. But anyway, so he put it up for sale. Then a local collector in Milwaukee, Doug Hankey, he saw it, he purchased it. He, he collects antique fire trucks. He's had um, 60 or so at least uh, over his lifetime. So he purchased the engine. He then repainted it. It was actually repainted in the, in the mid 1950s. So this is at least the second uh, coat of paint. And uh, then he repainted it and restored it and he actually featured it in our 1988 50th anniversary parade in Greendale here. I, uh, I'm a Greendale resident, I recall that. I remember seeing it in the parade and I actually remember seeing it at the high school after the parade. I was there with my brother and we were taking photos of it and here's a photo of it that my brother took at the high school uh, after the parade. He then had it for a while but then he sold it to a, another um, fire truck collector in Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Then that collector sold it to another collector in Lawton, Michigan. And then from Lawton, Michigan, it went to another collector in Santa Clara, Utah. And then from Utah, it went to another collector in Randolph, New Jersey. So literally, it went back and forth across the United States. The collector in New Jersey then had it. And uh, in 2013, for our 75th anniversary, I published a book about Greendale, a then and now pho photograph book. Well, I had it online and uh, this gentleman that owned the, the engine in Randolph, New Jersey saw my book, he purchased it, he wanted to learn more about Greendale because it had Greendale on the hood and he knew it was a Greendale engine. Uh, in my book I had, had provided my email address. He contacted me and wanted to find out more about the engine. At that time I didn't know very much about it. I certainly know a lot more now, but at that time I didn't. I sent him some more photos we had of the engine and uh, the last line of one of my emails, I believe the last email, was something to the effect that that would be cool to get that back to Greendale for the Historical Society to display an original artifact uh, of our fire department. Well, uh, a couple years later, a year or so, a half later, he had some engine troubles with it. He was on his way to a, a show and he didn't decided to donate it to our Historical Society. And, uh, when I got that email, I couldn't uh, respond fast enough. Yes, we are very interested. Uh, then, I'd say about a month later or so, on November 13th, 2015, the engine arrived here in Greendale. And uh, it, looks, uh, it looked very similar to today, but um, had very sparse equipment on there. And uh, what I've been doing the last uh, few years is trying to replicate exactly what it looked like when it was new. There are, we've got many photos, but there are two photos of it that uh, seem to be the two oldest photos showing the equipment that was on there. And uh, I've been trying to replicate exactly the equipment that's in the photo. Uh, even the brand, brands, uh, uh, brand names of the products as well. Like, like uh, back here, there's a HydroGuard fire extinguisher. I have a HydroGuard fire extinguisher because that was what was in the original photo. So this series of videos uh, will be showing uh, me working on the engine. Some of the stuff uh, was already completed uh, before I started video recording. Uh, you'll see me doing some of the stuff and then other videos will be just kind of catching up of what already had been done prior to the video recording them. So I hope you like this series and uh, just check back often and uh, we'll see where we're at. Thanks.